Hello there guys, FMU here and I am here to welcome you to Grassroots to Greatness. A new series, testing it out. Did one a few years back. Um, I think it might have been FM 14, no, it's 14 or 13, I can't remember. <clears throat> but basically it's following the story of the manager. You know how the Hinkley save is the club going from level 10 to the Prem. Well, this is the manager going from the Midlands League Division 1, which is about level uh, 11, 12, maybe lower actually, uh, hopefully, through to the Prem and maybe national management. We'll see. Don't know where we're going to go, don't know where we're going to get. Don't know what clubs we're going to go to. I mean, I don't know how long we're going to be at Aveston for. We could be at Aveston for six years, seven years. You know, we could be here for a a season, two seasons, move on. But um, I will do what I feel I would do in real life. I took the Aveston job because Aveston is close to Nuneaton where I grew up. And it's um, it's kind of a, the entry level where if I was going to, instead of doing coaching, scouting, uh, scouting, coaching and scouting, and uh, wanting to go into management, it would be Aveston. Barwell, um, Hinkley, Nuneet and Griff, those sort of teams around my local area uh, that would offer me that chance to get in and move on. So, enough of the babble. Let me introduce you to the club. Uh, they were founded in 2004. This was after the club went into liquidation um, as Aveston United in 2003. Um, they are a semi-professional club um, that play in the Midlands Football League Division 1 and um, the club play at Sheepy Road which is a very small ground in Aveston. They've been in the press last season or the, well not the season just gone but the season before I think it was um, for having a bit of crowd trouble uh, in a cup game against Tamworth over two legs and um, it got them some bad press uh, but you know that that's life i guess but yeah sheepy road is the modest little home of the club and um i'm looking forward to this it's something a little bit different but also very familiar you know it is that underdog thing but you know we we don't we're not reliant on get this one club taking us the entire journey we can go anywhere i mean we can even go abroad we can go to you know, I was going to say we could go abroad, we could go to Scotland, but you know what I mean, we could go anywhere in Europe, uh, we could go to Scotland to manage if we wanted to, to kind of perhaps fast track us to a sort of a championship standard level, no disrespect to the Scottish leagues, but you know what I mean, it's kind of like a sidestep going up to sort of sidestep into League One Championship, lower end Premier League, I don't know where we're going to go, I don't I'm not going to set myself a goal to manage this club, that club, the other club. Um, there's no path that I want to follow. It is just simply reacting to the situations as they arise. So, as far as transfers go, we've had to start pretty much from scratch, guys. You know, um, Chris Socket has left us. Uh, the 31-year-old, he's gone over to Wellingborough. Um, we've also let Phil Smith leave the club. Uh, he wasn't happy because I brought in two of the goalkeepers. And Ben Ashby is gone, basically, because he's not good enough. Nowhere near good enough. Um, local player, though, as you can see, Nuneet and Griff, Aveston, Treat and Barwell, Nuneet and Griff, and Aveston again. So, very local player. In terms of players in, um, there's been a lot of activity, <laughs> to say the least. Mitchell Piggan from Rugby, local striker, I know the guy well. His attitude uh, uh, over the years has hindered him. He could, in my opinion, and a lot of local coaches and scouts' opinions, been a real player. But he's never really settled in, got on with it, ticked his boxes, you know, eaten his greens and done the, done the work um, required, which is a shame. His best season was at Bedworth a few years back when they got promoted. 
uh, with 12 goals. Had a good season at Bedworth uh, last year, getting seven goals. Um, then he moved to rugby halfway through the season. Didn't do much. And now I've picked him up on a free. Um, so hoping for things from him. We can't do a save without the beast. The beast Busunga has arrived. Um, oh, nothing needs to be said about this guy. He is the man as far as I'm concerned. He's come in um, on a free. And we'll see where he goes on this one. He always goes a very different path on every single save. No save is the same for Dan Busungu. Baz Quinn, we have to, if you bring the beast, you have to bring the Baz. The Baz and the beast are like, uh, you know, they're not joined at the hip. I can't have one without the other. Pleased to say Barry accepted the offer to come in. He's by far our best player, in my opinion. Um, will, hopefully, fingers crossed, if he sticks around here, uh, will join the staff. If I move on, hopefully he'll follow me, join me there. Uh, I always like to have Barry as my assistant manager. Always do. Those of you who watched the Hinkley save have just seen him. Um, have just seen probably on Twitter that he's actually moved into management on his own now. So, you know, we want to uh, we want to see where we can take him in this save. Stefan Frost, a former Notts County trainee, always drifting around the uh, you know the release players on Football Manager, and uh, we took him in on a free. To boost the numbers more than anything um i'm not afraid to uh admit it that um he's played in australia i didn't realize he played in australia uh at, at this level guys to put it bluntly it, it's a case of get as many plays as you can with the best ratings you can and hold on to them while you can and then when they're gone don't get annoyed with them going because they're all on amateur contracts they'll sod off where they like when they like and uh, just you need to just forget about it and move on and just keep bringing them in um it's not ideal but that's the way it is at this level in real life i mean um, i've helped out at loads of local teams coaching and stuff and i was caretaker manager of a team uh, close by not long ago standing in um i couldn't take the job permanently because my working situation at the time but uh, it was a case of on the, the Tuesday I had, uh, say, 15 players in the squad. By Wednesday I had 11. By Thursday we had 16 players. You know, it's just the way it goes at this level. Um, and, you know, it's just what we have to deal with, unfortunately. Uh, Robert Oddy, former Neaton Town, or Neaton Borough as they were, uh, player. Know him well. He actually worked for me. He used to, I used to be his boss. Um when he worked in the warehouse for me years ago, a couple of years back. Really good lad, decent player, uh, former commentary trainee. Uh, had a great career for Nuneaton. Been at Barwell and Hinkley and rugby lately, but uh, he's, he's come down to Atherston now to ply his trade. And uh, I think he's going to be a decent player for us, definitely. Adds a bit of, bit of something to us. One of the just bring him in, you know, players here. Uh, Clive Moyo Modis has come in. South African striker, can play on the right wing. Uh, got good dribbling ability, decent pace. That's about it, really. Technique's okay. Flair, 10 determination, which will go, you know, it will take him so far. Former Rochdale trainee, not really settled anywhere in his entire career. He's come here, you know, he's not played yet. He might never play. Just one of those that, that's there to sort of bolster the squad Jamil Adam used to be an absolute monster goal machine on the old football manager games going back a few years when he was at Barnsley as a trainee he used to buy them all the time and he used to hammer teams left right and centre loved him on it absolutely loved him it just popped up um, from Flint Town so I snatched him up pretty damn quick I was not waiting around for him to discuss terms with them. Saw he was out of contract and yoinked him off them. Keenan Hughes Mason. Fantastic player for me in former saves. Never really got going. He used to be years back a Tottenham trainee. No, Tottenham. Millwall trainee. Um, and the, there was quite a bit expected of him. But he never quite got going. Um, got released. You know, did the rounds. I had him... 
at Welling a few years back on a save that wasn't on YouTube and um, he was an absolute beast for me, flew me through the through the leagues, you know, just absolutely yoinked me through. Did to Leatherhead what a lot of teams will do to me this season. He was at Leatherhead, I went to him, said I want you to play for me and he was like, okay, see you Leatherhead, you know, shut the door and off he trotted down the road. Uh, Michael Potts, former Blackburn trainee, very good in the non-league systems, absolutely amazing for us so far. Uh, got him from AFC Fylde um, in the Northern Premier Division on a free. Um, he used to be at Man U as well, so he's got good pedigree Man U and Blackburn. Uh, spent a bit of time at York for dropping down to Goisley and then Fylde and now he's joined the Adders, up oh, the Adders my friend. Uh, Dom Thomas, on loan from Bristol Rovers. Just, again, wanting somebody from a, a higher league team just to give us a little something um, to go on with. Nick Meese, he's wanted by a few teams. Oh, it's only Gresley now. There's about 25 teams looking at him a minute ago. Um, after his release from Wigan, he's been at Ram uh, Crawley, uh, Crawley, Crawley and Ramsbottom. Hasn't had a club for a couple of years but we've picked him up now you get a lot of those in non lee some of them will have been without clubs it's 2003 it's just you know bizarre but um they're still in the system somewhere sheffield wednesday uh rejects no released player mark peacock he's come in scored already um in the cup looks very decent i think it, i think he'll be uh one to watch for us this season at the center back role Ryan Howley, goalkeeper, came in, uh, played two, conceded none. He's a former Berry player. Again, very decent. A lot of these plays, there's not a lot to say about in the very middle of the road. Uh, Jamie Morton, been really impressed with him so far. He's come in, he's got good passing, he's got very good stats. Uh, former Wrexham and uh, Conwyn Bay. Uh, or Conwyn, I don't think it's Conwyn Bay, is it? Uh, it's just Conwyn, <laughs> sorry, my apologies. Um, he scored a good goal earlier on in the season. We'll go over those in a minute. This episode is going to be a little bit longer than I was hoping because uh, I want to go through the transfer, show you some goals. Um, and I don't think we'll get a live com in today, but I will continue and record straight away afterwards and we'll go into the live com for the second episode. The second proper episode uh, this is technically the first proper episode after the introduction <clears throat> Cameron Brown from Frome uh, this guy no, he looks serious he looks very serious uh, not brilliant but I just wanted again somebody to come in to you know add, add depth in numbers really and that's what he's doing for us He's moved quickly without playing. He went from Western Supermare to Winterbourne. Then this season, uh, that was this season, before the season started, he went to Frome as well, before the season started. Then he went from Frome to us before the season started. So he's about as loyal as an Amsterdam lady of the night. You know, there's no loyalty with that kid. Hatib Cham. Former Huddersfield player. I remember signing him years ago. Um... Very good stats, not giving him a crack yet. Oh, I'm very loyal to the beast and Mitch, so uh, he started the season. He has scored, he did score twice, but they were both disallowed. Bisungu's had about four goals disallowed. The only person who's had the ball in the net and it's not been disallowed, really, striker wise, is um, is Pigeon, Mikkel Pigeon. But uh, he's actually been called up to the under 20 squad um, for who is he from? Gambia, is he? Is he Gambian? Where's this? That was Gambia not long ago. What's going on here? New information. Huh? Yeah, it is Gambia. He's uh, I really confused the hell out of me then. He's been called up to the uh, Gambia under 20s. Who are you? Available on a free transfer, you say? I wonder if he'd come in on trial. Something I've really started doing is really um, taking... The trial system and really working with it because uh, it is a very good system really it's underused on fm rico taylor he's got a couple of goals for us very decent player on the left wing 
former Torquay, Tamworth and Hensford player been out of the you know, not had a club um as far as the game's concerned for a couple of seasons, but he's coming here and he's doing well for us. Uh Jordan Porter's just come in. He's a new goalkeeper that's come in and he's played to, he's conceded to. The only reason he's getting in is because his ratings are you know, he's rated a lot higher than Ra and than Howley. But Howley's played to, not conceded any, so you know, if he continues shipping the goals, then he will be dropped. Simple as that. You know, there's no loyalty at this level. And then Otis Weber is literally signed, I think, this morning. Um, former Macclesfield uh, player. I actually know this kid from doing the rounds up um, up by crew and that with the youth uh, coaching setups and stuff. Uh, he's a really nice lad. And um, that's why when I saw him, I thought, I'll give him a go. I'll give him a go. And um, so, yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm prepared to shove him in and let's see how he goes on. But yeah, let me just double check, I'm sure. Yeah, he's literally, look, signed today. So, nothing like throwing him in at the deep end. As far as the league's concerned, pre-season, I'll just quickly run through. Romulus beat us by two goals to nil in the first friendly in front of a whopping 35 strong crowd. We then managed to tip out uh, Barwell, our local rivals, managed by one of our former managers in Jimmy Janelli. Again, a guy I know well. I literally live um, five minutes from Barwell's ground, where I am on like smack bang, five minutes from Hinkley's ground, five minutes from Barwell's ground. It's uh, and literally two minutes from Earl Shilton's ground. So um, I'm in a good spot there. Um, we, we beat them 1-0, thanks to Cam Stewart. Headington Amateurs beat us. We were the amateurs on this occasion. Uh, three goals to two. Jimmy Laddam and Kiernan Hughes-Mason with goals there. Then Jamil, Am Ad Ad Jamil Adam got the equaliser, was it? No. He opened the scoring, I thought it was the equaliser. He scored against Chase Town. Um, as we drew one all in front of a crowd of 71. In the league, we kicked off the season with a 1-0 win uh, in the 93rd minute, I might add, against uh, Highgate. We'll have a little look at the goal there. Yeah, we'll have a little look at Rico's first goal for the club. We weren't brilliant in this opening game at all. But Taylor to Stewart. And then look at that, he's there to pick up on the rebound. Poor goalkeeping. And at this level, guys, seriously, you're going to see something. Whoa, he started absolutely hammering it down outside. I've got the window open. Uh, it's literally one o'clock in the morning and uh, the window's open because it's ridiculously hot. And I've just heard the rain just hammering down, absolutely smashing down great stuff <laughs> so after that we came up against uh, Brockenhurst in the uh, FA Cup preliminary you know the FA Cup extra preliminary you know we are not in <laughs> randomly Mark Clattenberg was the referee I find that hard to believe uh, but we you know we've not even made the preliminary rounds yet we're in the extra preliminary rounds of the FA Cup to get to the preliminary rounds of the FA Cup to get to the first round of the FA Cup that's how far down the pecking order we are but uh, we won by three goals to nil and I'm going to show you all the goals because I think this series we're going to when we look at matches and stuff i'm gonna it's gonna be a lot more there's gonna be more probably more catch-ups i want to try and get through the seasons quickly but um look at that lovely the two central defenders teaming up there me setting it on peacock knocking it in but i want to kind of get through the divisions not we're not division but i want to get through seasons a little bit quicker maybe than on other saves just to get the journey really flowing um, but it's up to you guys. You let me know which way round you want me to do it. Taylor Dink is over Rico Taylor to the Beast Bisungu for his first ever uh, Atherston goal. Lovely stuff from the Beast and Rico Taylor. And then Rico Taylor rounded the 3 0 victory off um, in the second half. 
with uh, his second goal of his Atherston career after some neat movement from the boys. Michael Potts heavily involved. I think Oddie and Quinn were involved as well. There's Quinn. No, it's the other way. But here's Rico Taylor. Passes it to Morton, who's brought down. It's cleared away. This is one hell of a long highlight. I don't remember it being this long when I was uh, watching it by any stretch of the imagination but Hughes Mason tried to nod it on to absolutely nobody but then look at the beast he's in there and then he's brought down but Rico Taylor's there to follow up to smash it home and we've we ran out 3-0 winners which was amazeballs really pleased with that um, their fans don't look very happy at all uh, but that's tough luck, guys. That's the FA Cup. That's what happens in... What's going on here? That's what happens in the FA Cup. Then, after that, we lost 1-0 to uh, Pershaw. We were poor, but the players were slightly tired. And that, <laughs> it was Porter's first game in goal. And he shipped one and we lost. But I thought, I'll give him a second chance against uh, Racing Warwick. I'll give him a oh you know I'll give him that chance and we absolutely poleaxed um Warwick by five goals to one uh Morton's goal this was the goal I was talking about he showed great determination strength power to steamroller in and you know barge a few guys out the way to slide home it was a really really good goal from him if you look here look watch this it's the ball comes and he's just like bang out the way bang have it 1-0 smacks um is that Bisungu smacks Bisungu in the face in the celebration but that's all good and then Mitchell Piggin came on and uh stole the show with two goals Hughes Mason heavily involved again this was his best goal look at Piggin here just bombs away have it straight into the back of the net some random noises going on outside I think it's the cats hell oh, shit and then Piggin wound up the match after uh, Thomas picked the ball up here beautiful effort to try and score bounced out pig and put it away terrible goalkeeping in all fairness but uh, that rounded off a fantastic 5-1 win for the adders so guys after our opening three league games we sit fourth in the table uh, bowl hauler ahead of us by a point top of the league Piggan is the top goal scoring league but look look who is in our division and we've got them not next the next game is the cup game uh, but after that, we've got our boys Hinkley, and they have actually signed in real life Dequan Ebanks, who I had on my Hinkley save. No, 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 I know, right? So that's something to look forward to. Next episode, we might do one or two live comms because we won't have any games to catch up on because we're going to go straight into the uh, cup game against Enfield, then the Hinkley game, then the Ipswich cup game and um that's what we'll do in that video pilkington triple x wow is that, is that a club that's set up by a porn king or something <laughs> crazy stuff but anyway guys thank you for watching let me know what sort of format you want do you want uh, more live comms do you want uh recaps like this do a recap video then the next video jump straight into a match or two or three let me know which way around you want to do it. I am planning on doing um, youth intake videos, if we get any. Uh, end of season reviews, pre-season reviews for the seasons going forward and stuff like that. And uh, whenever I move club, there will be a short video like the introduction to the series where it's like announced um, in the press or whatever that I've moved. So guys remember hit the thumbs up. We need to I need to see the love on this to keep it going. Really do appreciate it and I will see you all in the next episode.